I've just disembarked a European river cruise on a river cruise line that cost around one third of the other mainstream cruise lines. It was a very eventful cruise and some odd things did happen. In the past I've taken river cruises with the more luxurious cruise lines but when TUI announced that they were entering the river cruise market I hoped that this would be the answer to river cruising on a budget. We did have quite a few issues on this cruise, more issues than on most other cruises I've taken but this cruise was the first sailing of the season so we didn't expect everything to go perfect the main thing for me though was would I get what I had paid for. I hadn't paid for much for this cruise so I didn't have huge expectations. Our cruise included flights from London and we set sail from Budapest. When we arrived we were met by a TUI rep and taken on a TUI transfer to our ship, the TUI Skylar. Normally if you want to take a European river cruise you'll probably be looking at three, four hundred pounds per night, sometimes a thousand pounds per person per night, but I paid less than that for the entire week including flights, cruising on the Danube with TUI, staying in a superior balcony cabin. So many people pre-cruise had told me that I would be bored on this cruise, that I should expect to be the youngest person on board and I'd heard that TUI's food wasn't exactly great. For a thousand pounds per person though I decided that I wanted to find out for myself. When we arrived and we boarded the TUI Skylar, I was amazed not just by how cool this little atrium was, but by how easy the check-in process was. We showed our passports to the person at reception and they gave us our cruise cards and that was it. At that point, our rooms were already ready, so we were ready to start enjoying the cruise. We were meant to be boarding the ship earlier in the day, but our flight was delayed by a couple of hours, which meant that we didn't actually get there until around 5 p.m. The TUI Skylar, although she is new to TUI, she isn't a new river ship, she's actually around 10 years old. Looking at the ship it looked very modern and at that time I didn't really realize that this ship wasn't new. A few things did happen during our cruise that kind of reminded me of the ship's age but it was all very modern. I liked the design of it and I thought it was very cool. Like most river ships, the TUI Skylar is made up of four main decks. On the top deck, you'll find lots and lots of seating. On the third deck, you'll find a restaurant and lounges on it. And deck two and one are mostly just cabins. This little atrium area in the middle spans decks two and three. There wasn't a swimming pool on board the TUI Skylar, but there was a little wellness area that could be booked. Here there was a sauna, a hot tub, and a few little chairs. We wouldn't have used the swimming pool much on this cruise anyway, so I didn't really miss that. Quite a few people had told me before the cruise that I would be bored on the cruise so I was really looking forward to seeing what would happen in these lounges. The TUI Skylar actually has two lounges on board which isn't something I've seen on a river ship before. In the atrium there is a receptions desk, there's a cruise director's desk and there's also a coffee machine that you can use 24 hours a day. By the coffee machine, there are a couple of little jars that they would refill with cookies. I will say these cookies did catch me out a couple of times. I would think that it was chocolate chip and it would turn out to be a raisin. I do not like raisin cookies, but still a good effort from TUI. And from here, you could either go up to the top deck or you could go down. There wasn't any kind of elevator or lift on board and on TUI's website it says that TUI river cruises aren't wheelchair friendly. Most river cruise ships won't have a lift or an elevator that goes to the top deck because when they need to go under bridges they have to squash everything down but most other river cruise ships will have an elevator that just goes on the inside decks. There was nothing like that, no elevator or any lift at all on board the TUI Skylar. Interestingly, sometimes river cruise ships will dock side by side, so you may find that guests from other ships are walking through your ship's atrium to get onto theirs. During our cruise, we had one situation where the ships were docked side by side and everybody was going into our ship to go up and then across into their ship on the other side. It is really odd to have another cabin right against your cabin if you're not expecting it. I did see a woman completely naked on this cruise in a situation like this, but it is quite cool to be able to walk through other ships and have a quick look around. I'll tell you the naked lady story later. As soon as we got on board the ship, we headed to our cabins. I was taking this cruise with my brother and my parents, and normally on any cruise, me and my brother will have the cheapest cabin available on the ship. The tables had turned on this cruise though, and me and my brother had the cabin on deck two, and my mum and my dad had their cabin on deck one. I wouldn't normally pay more than I have to for a cabin, but I found out before the cruise that the cabin that I had booked, which was called a standard cabin, had a fixed double bed and cruising with my brother, that was not going to work. I had to phone up TUI before my cruise to upgrade my cabin. It only cost £59 in total and to me £59 to not have to share a bed with my brother, that was £59 well spent. We ended up with a superior deck two cabin while my parents were in a superior deck one. I do wish that this had kind of popped up or flagged up at the time of the original booking but the lady I spoke to at TUI was very helpful and it didn't take very long to fix. I may have missed it though because I was booking online trying to use cashback and discounts. I did find a £400 discount code 
and I did get 10% cash back on the cruise, so it was definitely worth it, even if I did miss the whole bed situation. I've been on river cruises before, but I've never stayed in a cabin that was below the waterline. We didn't know at this point just how little time my parents would spend in this cabin before they would get upgraded, thanks to a very strange problem that kept happening with their cabin. But it was very cool to experience what it was like, particularly when sailing in a cabin that's below the waterline. The cabin was exactly the same size as the superior cabins on other decks, and our initial impressions were very good. The cabin was a good size, and seeing the water rush by the windows was very cool. I wouldn't recommend a cabin like this if you are somebody who does get claustrophobic you are below the waterline and I do understand how that may make some people feel but I thought that it was very cool I didn't really pay much attention at this point to the glass bathroom doors, but this would become quite a problem quite soon. This was one of my least favourite things about the cabin, it is just a terrible design. I'll show you why later in the video, including a video clip of me in the shower. Kind of. Well, I was in the shower, yes, you'll see. Another thing to note that I thought could have been improved was the fact that there were only two plug sockets in the entire cabin. There was one by the beds and one on the desk. The one on the desk was used to charge our excursion boxes that we needed for our excursion and also this was where the kettle plugged in. We did make a lot of tea on this cruise, so more plug sockets would have been appreciated. At this point in the cruise, we were very hungry. We've been traveling since the early hours of the morning and apart from a sandwich that we got in the airport for breakfast and a Rice Krispie bar on the plane, we hadn't had any food. I knew that the dining times on river cruise ships were quite fixed and I knew that we had missed lunch, but I was really hoping that there would be some food and that I didn't have to wait until 7 p.m. for dinner. I was very hungry at this point. Luckily, we found that Tui had put on a light lunch of sandwiches and cakes in the main lounge, which was very much appreciated. We never saw any kind of light lunch or snack options like this again during the cruise which was a shame. The dining times did feel quite fixed compared to other river cruise lines that I've been on but I like the fact that you could just go to the restaurant and you could just sit wherever you wanted with whoever you wanted. On some river cruise lines you will have a set time and a set table and you will be table sharing and I much prefer the kind of just come and sit method that they had on this cruise. Lunch was normally open from 12 till 2 and dinner was 7 till 9. Most days breakfast finished at 9 a.m and the wasn't any more food after that. I'm not a morning person and if I don't have to be up before nine, I'm not getting up to have breakfast before nine. I did often end up just eating biscuits in my cabin instead of going to breakfast, but quite a few days we had excursions that would meet before 9am. That is quite a common river cruise thing. Our bags arrived in our cabin shortly after we did. We unpacked and we went to the main lounge to go to a kind of welcome talk. One of the really good things about river cruising is that you really do get to know your crew. They do have have time off but it feels like they never have time off because if you need to find somebody you can almost always find them. The captain was lovely too and he said if we had any questions we could just pop by the wheelhouse where he was steering the ship and we could just ask him any questions. He showed us the equipment, he talked us through what he was doing and you can't do that on an ocean ship. You can't just walk up to the captain and say how's your day going but on a river cruise they welcomed it. They were very happy to talk. Most people who work on river cruise ships do have multiple jobs on board. Our cruise director team, Susie and Sonia, would not only do the normal kind of cruise director duties like hosting a welcome talk, but they were also brilliant singers who would sing for us in the evenings and they would do things like make sure that we all got on the right excursions at the right time. They literally picked us up from the airport and when we would go off on excursions, they would be there at the front door waving and saying goodbye to us. They were lovely, they were so friendly and it was nice to have people who you could ask any questions to. I'm sure they must have time off, but it felt like they were always there. I think if you're a nervous traveler, this is really nice because it really feels like you're being kind of looked after on a river cruise. It was around this point that I got my first static shock from the ship. I'm pretty used to getting static shocks on ocean cruises, but this ship was something else. It was like an electrocharged ship. It wouldn't just be the case that you'd go to open a door and get a static shock. I would be walking down the corridor and a static shock would jump off of the walls and and onto my elbow. I didn't even touch it, but I would get a static shock. I found out later in the cruise that a lot of the carpets were made from recycled fishing nets, and maybe that's why. It wasn't a problem, it was quite funny to be honest to give each other these static shocks, but I've never felt anything like it. The river cruise that we had booked was a seven night cruise visiting Germany, Austria, and Slovakia on the river Danube. There was 120 pounds of excursion credit included in what we paid, and some of the tours, like the walking tours, only cost 15 pounds, so we were able to book excursions pretty much every day. We did buy a couple of longer, more expensive excursions, but they were still so much cheaper than you'd find on the big ocean cruise lines. 
Dinner was served from 7 to 9 and I think on this Thursday we were probably at dinner at about 7.01. We were very, very hungry. They had tables for two, tables for four, tables for six and when we walked in we just sat down. As with most river cruises, drinks were included with meals, wine was offered to us, but I don't really drink wine, so I asked for a soft drink. I knew that this ship was a Coke ship instead of a Pepsi ship, so I asked for a Coke Zero, and my dad asked for a beer because he prefers beer to wine. Wine refills were offered continually throughout the meal, but if you weren't having wine, if you were having beer or having a soft drink, we almost always had to ask for a refill. For some reason, the Coke was served in these tiny little glasses, so I always wanted a refill during the meal, but I didn't want to bother the crew too much. Much. they seemed very very busy they were rushing around all over the place but it was very interesting the way that this developed as our cruise went on at the beginning of the cruise I'm pretty sure they had to walk all the way to the bar to get me my coke zero but by the end of the cruise they had coke zero bottles lined up on the side this was the first sailing of the season so it's always going to take a bit of time to kind of get into the flow of things and work out where things need to be it turns out that for me if you have me on a ship to have a supply of some sort of diet cola on the side is the best way to do lunch or dinner. After dinner we set sail from Budapest and most of the guests headed up to the top deck to watch as we sailed down the Blue Danube as they say. I hate to burst your bubble on this one but the Blue Danube really isn't very blue, it's kind of a murky browny green colour. <laughs> After dinner, we were tired from our long day of traveling, so we had a drink in the lounge and then went back to our cabins. It was at this point that we discovered the problem with having a glass bathroom door. I don't know about you, but if I was tasked with building a bathroom and I had to think of a material for the walls, the last thing that I would think of would be glass. The glass was frosted, so we assumed that that meant that you wouldn't be able to see in or out of the bathroom, but that was not the case. If we used the bathroom with the lights on at night, you could see everything that the person was doing. During the day, if the lights weren't on, it wasn't too bad. You could still see if somebody was sat on the toilet or if they were stood up washing their hands, but you couldn't see everything that they did. At night though, you could see and you could hear everything. You could literally tell how many pieces of toilet paper the other person took and nobody needs to know that. The actual bathroom itself was nicely designed. The shower was big and powerful and there were molten brown toiletries, which were very nice. It was just a shame that there was no real privacy. I shared a photo of the cabin while I was on board and I had a lot of comments that said things like, just make your brother leave the room when you want to use the bathroom. I don't know about you, but I normally have a shower in the morning or the evening. And if I was to do that and to make my brother leave the room, he'd have to get up, get fully dressed, walk down the corridor, sit there while I have a shower and then come back and switch places. It was just not ideal. It was wasn't a huge problem for us we just showered without the bathroom lights on and we told each other when we were having a shower so that we could just look the other way but I wouldn't really like to share this cabin with my friends I think that would be a bit awkward our first stop on our cruise was Bratislava and we didn't dock until the afternoon. The weather was actually quite warm at the start of our cruise and I made the mistake of only looking at the weather forecast for the start of our cruise, which meant that when the weather got colder and wetter, I had not packed for that. I was not prepared. I wish I bought a hat. I wish I bought some gloves, but I didn't. Top tip, check the weather forecast for the entire week in all of the places that you're going to. Our cabin was really warm during the cruise, the start of heavy warmth that you can feel it when you breathe. Clearly the light had been coming in through the glass all day, it heated up the room and our air conditioning just didn't work. It was like an old man breathing warm air into the corner of the room. It was just, it just was not working. I went to the reception desk and the lady there was very happy to help. She came straight along to have a look at our cabin and she called the maintenance man to see if they could make it any colder. They said that this was as cold as the air conditioning went and that they couldn't do anything. The weather got colder and colder as our cruise went on so it didn't really affect us but I'm glad I reported this to reception because if I was cruising in this cabin in summer I would not be happy with the lack of air conditioning. The fact that we had two cabins on the ship meant that I could really tell that one had air conditioning and one just wasn't working but again this was the first sailing of the season so that's the type of thing that they'll probably work out it might have just been because the air conditioning hadn't been used for a few months and something needed to happen the lady working on the reception desk said that I was very good at feedback. She wasn't being sarcastic, she was being deadly serious. They did want feedback and they were very nice when you gave it to them and I'm taking that as a compliment. Very good at feedback. Bratislava was the only port where we didn't have an excursion book so we just wandered up the hill and took in the amazing views. On river cruises you dock right in the middle of the town or the city so it's unbelievably easy to just wander off. There's no kind of queuing or security or anything like that that you would find on an ocean ship. Towards the end of the cruise I wandered off to go to Aldi to buy some chocolate. I bought a chocolate bunny rabbit because why not? I could. When we were getting off the ship we had to hand in our room keys which were just these kind of white reprogrammable cards and you would 
would be given a shore card that had your cabin number on it. This is how they know who's on the ship and who's on land. I have been on other river cruises that have a similar kind of procedure. Some other river cruise lines do have a process that's more similar to ocean cruises where you scan a QR code or you scan a barcode to get on and off. But on this cruise, we had to hand in these cards and take these cards with us. The good thing about river cruises and the fact that there's not so many passengers is that they're able to be quite accommodating of things. If we were doing an excursion and it meant that we would miss lunch or we would miss dinner, they would be able to just move lunch or just move dinner. On one day though, they did move afternoon tea to the time that I would be off the ship on an excursion. They normally do afternoon tea once per week and I missed it. I loved afternoon tea, but we were off on an excursion. Nothing we could do. On a river cruise, you'll sometimes arrive into port in the morning, sometimes you'll arrive in the afternoon, you might leave in the afternoon, you might leave late at night. It just depends really on how far your ship has to go. We were docked in Bratislava until the evening and on this day I did actually get changed for dinner. I did this less and less as the cruise went on, partly because it got very very cold and I didn't really want to wear a dress and also because there's really not any dress code on Turi River cruises. You're not allowed to wear beachwear or swimwear in the main dining room or the lounge but I think that's about it. There was one gala night where guests were invited to dress up if they wanted to, but most of the time I was just wearing leggings and a jumper or a hoodie and that was fine and I loved it. The food definitely is one area where I feel like Tui have cut costs, where you can tell that they are on a budget, particularly when it comes to the portion sizes. This was one of the mains that I had. It was very tasty but very small. I'll talk more about the food later in the video. It was around now that mum and dad started to have trouble with their cabin on deck one. When you were in the cabin and it was sailing, you could really feel the vibrations and you could really hear the water going by. That wasn't the problem that is to be expected from a cabin on deck one. But what isn't to be expected is the fact that their door just kept randomly opening. It happened to me once when I was taking photos for my cabin review, which is now live on my website. I thought maybe my parents had come back or maybe housekeeping was coming in the room, but there was nobody there. This would happen quite often so my mum went to the reception desk to report it and they sent a maintenance man to look at the door. It kept happening though during the following night and mum and dad basically had to barricade all of their spare furniture against the door because the door would not stay closed. It kept opening even if you locked it it would keep opening. It must have been something electrical going wrong in that door but the next day my mum and dad were upgraded to a cabin on deck too. Luckily the ship wasn't at full capacity. We only had 94 guests on board out of around 150 and they very much liked their new cabin. We were just opposite each other, which was very, very handy. Sailing from Bratislava in Slovakia to Krems in Austria was the first time that we really experienced that kind of traditional river cruise scenery that you see on all of the river cruise adverts. You know, the ones where people are sunbathing and they're sipping champagne. It wasn't quite like that for us. I did have a cup of tea up there though. And at one point I did take off my jumper because it reached 20 degrees Celsius, which if you're from the UK, 20 degrees Celsius is a nice day. We passed under multiple bridges and for one bridge we were told that we had to sit down and that we couldn't stand up. The wheelhouse where the captain sails from was dropped down to half height and even the crew ducked as we went under the bridge. When you are going under a bridge like this you know that it will fit, you trust the captain completely but you still kind of flinch as it comes towards you. It comes towards you so fast. On some river cruises you will find that they completely close the top deck to all passengers when they go under these bridges. A friend of mine Dave was able to leave his camera on the top deck when going under a very close bridge. Thankfully his camera was okay but a few more centimeters and it would have ended up in the river. In our port stops of Krems and Linz, we had the walking tour. They both took around an hour and a half and we used these little things that are called Vox boxes, which meant that we could hear our guide talking even if we kind of wandered off a little bit. The tours gave us a great overview of the places that we were visiting and the guides were always local. We could then go off and explore and see anything else that we wanted after those little walking tours. These Vox boxes that we used to listen to our guide were very cool. When we were in Linz, our group got split into two pieces and the second group, I was in the second group, we got stuck behind a door where we just couldn't get through and we could still hear our guide ahead of us through the door saying kind of where are they we've lost half of the group thankfully she came back for us but it was very funny to be able to hear her she didn't know where we were another massive pro of river cruising is that because you're always so close to land you almost always have internet access Tui river cruises do provide free wi-fi but i almost always had 4g and my 4g was actually good enough to do our normal weekly friday live stream if you came to our 
live stream and you watched it, I propped you up on a bin in my cabin to do that live stream. Thank you so much for coming to that. I'm amazed that it works so well as it did. It works very well until we sailed away and I lost signal, but I think that just shows how smooth river cruise ships are that I didn't even notice that we had sailed away. If you're somebody who's worried about seasickness or anything like that, you do not need to be. I don't even pack seasickness pills for river cruises because you do not feel a thing. And this is coming from someone who gets quite sick on ocean cruises, in cars, in buses. River cruises, the best way to travel if you get seasick. Your comments and questions on things like the live stream and my social posts really help me to form these videos. I had questions about how old the other passengers were, what was the evening entertainment like. And during this live stream, I said that we had not docked next to any other cruise ships. That was about to change though, hence me seeing a lady completely naked. One thing that the TUI Wi-Fi was really good for though is using the TUI Navigate app. It's not actually an app, it's just a web page that you load when you're on the ship, but you can see the daily schedule on there, you can see your onboard account on there, you can see any information you need, and it worked really quite well. There weren't any paper versions of the daily schedule handed out, so it's important that somebody in your group has a phone or a tablet or a laptop. I don't doubt that if you went to reception and asked them to print the daily schedule for you that they would, but the app was very good and I would recommend you use it on a TUI cruise. Before taking this cruise, I had a lot of people tell me that I would be bored. I think the impression is that nothing happens on river cruise ships and that just isn't the case. Sure, it's not like an ocean ship, you're not going to find casinos or Broadway style shows, you're not going to find seven things happening at once, but there normally is something happening on a river cruise ship, especially in the evening. During the day there might be yoga on the top deck, a light stretch, they did some games on the top deck too, it was a bit chilly for too many games. We also had things like port talks every day about the place that we were visiting tomorrow, and we even had a lecture about the history of the Danube, which was very interesting. In the evenings, we had live music from Susie and Sonia, we had a guest musician, we had a comedian, we had quizzes, we even had a German band that came on board and really got the audience involved. They handed out instruments for people to play and even got a couple of people up to dance with them, including my friend Steve. Well done, Steve. If you did want it, there was entertainment in the main lounge until around midnight every night. And I have to admit, I don't think I ever made it up until the end of the entertainment. I was not used to getting up so early for these excursions. When we visited Passau in Germany, we went on what I think was my favourite excursion. It was a Bavarian beer and boat excursion and we tried lots of different types of beer. We sailed from Germany into Austria and back to Germany during our tour. We also had a bit of a walking tour and we had a bit of a tour on the bus. Our guide Eva for that tour was the absolute best. She was so funny, she was so happy, she was always laughing away to herself and we all came away from that tour feeling really happy, maybe in part due to the beer but also just because of the really good day we'd had. During our walking tour we saw all of these amazing colourful houses and this one actually has flood markers on the side which shows the different floods and the different years that they occurred. It is crazy how high some of these floods have been but very very cool to see. During our journey towards Vienna we passed through multiple locks and the captain said that we had 22 locks to go through during this cruise. I've been on river cruises before where we've gone through locks but never 22. It was really creepy and really cool to be inside the cabin when going through a lock. It would get darker and darker until the view would just be of this dripping black concrete wall. It was honestly like being in some sort of cave. We did go through some locks at night and sometimes you would feel a judder or a bit of a shake, but it never woke me up. I'm very good at sleeping. In some locks, we will be able to go to the top deck when passing through the lock and the water level would either be dropped or raised up. We would often have another ship with us there in the lock too, so we would be able to wave at each other and kind of have a look at each other's ships. The ships next to us would normally be Viking river ships. Before this cruise, I knew that Viking were the most popular European river cruise company. I knew that they ruled the rivers, but I did not know just how many river ships they have. They have 76 river ships. Everywhere we went we would see groups of people on Viking tours and they were easy to identify thanks to their Viking umbrellas. I did use one of these Viking umbrellas in Norway back in 2018 and they are lovely umbrellas. I did look up the price though of how much it would have cost me to go on the Viking cruise instead of this TUI cruise and it was around three times the price which is kind of what I expected. 
One thing that I'm sure would be better on a Viking river cruise than a Tui river cruise though is the food. The food was well cooked and I think that the kitchen team did a good job with what they were given but it was kind of obvious that they were being kept on a budget. The sizes of the meals were really inconsistent and sometimes I'd end up with a main like this which was absolutely tiny. I did feel a little bit like they had put me on a diet. Of course you can ask for more food on a cruise, there's no limit to the number of courses you can order and I did hear people order multiple mains and multiple desserts but this is probably just something that they'll work out as time goes on. We did try a couple of local dishes on board which was nice and they did always have lots of vegetarian options. I did find the labelling of the menu to be a bit strange though. This symbol which normally means vegetarian or vegan actually meant vegetarian or can be vegetarian. I'm vegetarian so I always had to check when ordering one of these dishes that it didn't include me and if it did ask for it without. It's not a massive problem but it's just not really that clear. On what is called gala night there was a seven course fixed dinner. I explained that I was vegetarian, lots of other people did that too and they had vegetarian options, that was not a problem. My main was some sort of cheesy eggplant dish. Eggplant of course being what we in the UK would call an aubergine. Your Britishism of the week is the combination of foods that I had during this cruise that have different names in the US and the UK. We call this an aubergine and you call it an eggplant. We call this a courgette in the UK and you call it a zucchini in the US. This is coriander which I believe you call cilantro. Cilantro, I can't even pronounce it, please let me know. I hear it a lot on TV but we don't use that word here, it is coriander. Some of the dishes that we had were really tasty and there was never anything wrong with it but if you're somebody who's a real foodie I would suggest another cruise line. If you're somebody like me though who is just happy to have somebody else cook for you and somebody else do the washing up you will enjoy it. Tui advertise the fact that they have two restaurants on board but in reality it isn't really two restaurants. There's a main restaurant that you can see here and then slightly further down there's an area called the bistro. This was a more relaxed area where you could grab a few things but it really was just a few things. You couldn't get to the bistro without going through the main dining room. The area down here in the bistro was really nice, it had glass on three sides but we never sat down here because we normally just ate in the main restaurant. Another thing that I was told pre-cruise a lot is that I should expect to be the youngest person on the cruise. River cruising does have a reputation as being for older people, even more so than ocean cruising. I do understand where that stereotype comes from though and on my last couple of river cruises I was the youngest person there by quite some way. On our cruise there were a handful of other people who were my age, most people were older but this was an adult only cruise so we were never going to see families on board. When the passengers for the cruise after ours came onto the cruise there were definitely people people younger than me getting on the next cruise. On our cruise there were people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, maybe 90s or 100s, I don't know. I'm not very good at guessing people's ages based on just looking at them but I would say the average age was probably around 50 maybe. I never felt out of place on this cruise though, nobody ever assumed I was working there or anything like that. We were able to see the next guest coming onto the cruise because we actually spent two days in Budapest at the end of our cruise and our flight wasn't until the end of the second day. So for a while there was basically double the amount of passengers on the ship which was pretty hectic. We wandered around Budapest that day and Budapest is absolutely beautiful. If you've never been to Budapest I would definitely recommend a visit. I've been a couple of times but I'll happily go back again and again. It's one of my favourite places. Another place that we visited on our cruise was Vienna and we had a city tour that lasted about half the day. It was so unbelievably cold this day, so cold on our tour. I feel like I've just about got the feeling back in my fingers and my nose. We didn't have to wear face masks on the ship at all but I wore them most when we were just wandering around outside because it was so cold I thought that my nose may fall off. Vienna is also absolutely lovely and I'd love to go back to Vienna. On a river cruise you do get to know your fellow guests really well, much better than you would on an ocean cruise and I heard the same kind of feedback from most people. Most people said that they had enjoyed the cruise and for the price that they paid they said that they got good value. I didn't find anybody who said that they hadn't enjoyed the cruise. Quite a few people did have problems with broken toilets, door locks, air conditioning not working but we all kind of agreed that these things would be hopefully worked out as the season went on. It was clear they were still kind of ironing out the creases of the process but that is to be expected. 
I knew that I would get to know my fellow guests on my cruise ship, but I didn't expect to get to know a fellow guest on another cruise quite in the way that I did. When we came back to the ship from Budapest, I noticed that our ship was still docked next to another ship. So I thought I'm going to go to the cabin and I'm going to film this because it's interesting. It's a good thing. I want to be able to show you guys. For some reason, I didn't pick up my camera and I'm glad that I didn't because as I came into the room, I saw somebody kind of far off in the distance. I couldn't really work out who it was, what it was. So I went over to have a closer look and this woman stepped out of her bathroom completely naked into her cabin, bearing in mind we were probably about, I don't know, two or three meters apart and she thankfully did not see me. My brother was shouting at me, Emma close the curtains, close the curtains, don't look, close the curtains and I did close the curtains and I don't think we opened them again until that ship was gone. We were probably about two or three meters apart and there are only two glass doors separating us. How she didn't see me I don't know but she didn't and I'm quite glad she didn't. If you're somebody who's never taken a river cruise, I think the Tui River Cruise would be a good place to start because you're gonna know if you hate or love river cruising without spending the normal river cruising price. If you are from outside the UK, you have to book the cruise directly with Tui and then organize your own flights. But if you're from the UK, it's normally kind of a package deal. If you are somebody who cruises a lot though with Viking or Ama Waterways, you definitely would notice the difference coming onto the Tui River Cruise. But I liked it, I felt very at home on this ship and I definitely got what I paid for. To find out how my first river cruise went, including the swimming pool that turns into a cinema, check out this video next. This is the most popular video on my channel and it just passed 1 million views. So watch this next. 